Yo, what's happening, my kings, my G's, my gents, all of y'all? Today, we have another transformation. We have a crispy skin fade with a comb over, but this is how we looked like before. And I'm not gonna front. If he pulls up to me asking for a dollar, I'd be shook. You feel, <laughs> you feel me? But we're gonna turn him into Poppy Chulo. You already know you about to look crazy after this transformation. But the first thing you have to do is you have to part his hair. Uh, I like to separate the top hairs from the side hair. And this is not the side where he parts his hair, actually. This is the opposite side of his part. Uh, the reason why we want to do this is just so we can keep the top hairs out of the way and we can work on the sides. Next thing you guys are going to want to have to do is do a little bit of clipper over comb. The reason why I like to do clipper over comb is because it just removes bulk so easily while at the same time sculpting the haircut you feel me you're sculpting the shape of how his haircut is gonna come out uh the reason why i also do this is because like i said i like that box type shape uh next thing we are doing is going with our number four guard open and you're just scooping all the way up once you're scooping all the way up you're gonna have to want to kind of like really scoop outwards that's what I like to say. You want to kind of scoop outwards just so you keep a lot of the bulk up there. Next thing you're doing is going with your trimmers. These are my wall detailers. And bro, I am telling you, these are sharp as hell. I highly recommend these trimmers. They're amazing. They haven't done me dirty yet. Wall, y'all amazing. I love these trimmers. Send me another pair. <laughs> Actually, I bought it myself, but still. Next thing we're doing is going with our no guard open, and you want to go about an inch or so. After you do that, you want to go with your no guard halfway open and go right underneath where you did with your one guard or with your no guard fully open. After that, you go with your no guard closed using your corners. That's when you start attacking at that line. And because you gave yourself enough room to space all that out, the great the fade is actually going to start looking really, really, really blurry. It's going to start looking gradient. It, it's going to look really good because of how big and wide you left your your guidelines. You know. Next thing we're going to want to do is go with my number one and a half guard closed. Same exact process, same exact step. You want to go up about an inch or so just to leave yourself enough room to fade everything out. Then with your number one guard from open to close, you attack that line. So as you slowly start getting down to that line, you gradually start closing your lever as well. So I will go with my one guard open, go up to where I did my one and a half bar close. And then I will go with my number one guard halfway open, go right underneath where I did my one guard open. And then I will go with my number one guard closed using my corners. I will start attacking that line where I will go right underneath where I did my number one guard halfway open. Same exact steps you would do with my number 0.5 guard or my 16th guard, except I would actually start using more of my corners, not the full blade itself, because we want to break up that bottom line. You feel me? So the reason why I avoid using a full blade with my 16th is because I don't want to create another line. It's starting to look really faded, so I don't want to take the chances of creating another line and pushing the fade up. That's one thing you guys got to keep in mind as well. Patience is key, y'all. Be patient and everything will come. It's the process. Trust the process. I promise you it will come. I hated the process, but I'm glad I went through the process. Now we're going with our number three guard and you're just scooping upwards. You feel me? You're just scooping upwards. I would say up to the about middle of his head. And then over here by the taper, you go about an inch or about two inches up, up to like the crown area still scooping hours and then with my number two guard the same exact steps i did with everything else you gradually close your guard as soon as you keep going down closer to the bottom line that's all you're doing once i feel like i haven't done anything else or i can't possibly do anything else with my number two guard that's when i go to my number one and a half guard same exact process go with my number one half one and a half guard open and then i go with my number one and a half guard halfway open and then i go with my number one and a halfway half guard halfway or fully closed actually 
right? That's starting to look really, really faded. Once I feel like I've done, I've finished with that side of the haircut, I start moving on to the back. This is when I start lining him up. I just want to make sure I'm giving him a straight, clean cut in the back. This is going to be skin taped, so we don't have to worry about giving him a round shape or anything else like that. You're going to see how I actually start tapering him up. Uh, right over here on the sides, we're also shaping up the hooks around his ear. I'm sorry you can't see it that well on this side, but on the other side, you're going to see it a little bit better. Uh, once you shape him up, you clear everything from the bottom down. You're going to want to do the same exact thing on this side as well. Once I start doing the shape up on this side, I start realizing, yo, there's way too much hair on this side for me to even see his natural lineup. So what I do is I grab my number three guard close and I start clearing off the bulk from the bottom half of his head. That way, when I do line him up, I can really see what I'm cutting and also so I can see his natural hairline, right? Clear canvas before you start working. Otherwise, you're going to start getting lost. It's going to start getting messy. You want to do this as neat as you can. What you're going to do on one side, you're going to do on the other side. So remember what we did on the other side. We're going to want to do the same exact steps on this side. I'm just going to let y'all watch right now. Oh, y'all thought I was gone? Nah, I'm not gone. I'm still here. I hope y'all enjoyed that minute of me not talking because we back. And this is the part where I'm trimming the hooks around his ear. My mindset while doing this is, yo, these trimmers are like a pencil and I'm just sketching it out. You want to be very patient with this. And if you don't get it, if you're struggling with this, just keep doing them. Just keep doing them. Be very slow and you're going to eventually get the hang of it because experience, 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 you're going to get it. I struggle with this all the time, but now I can do it so easily. Next thing we're doing is we're going with our trimmers and we're starting to do the tape up in the back. I like to do kind of like a burst almost. I it kind of went with the same scheme as the side taper. Uh, next thing we are doing is going with our no guard open and you want to go about an inch above your first guideline that way you give yourself enough room to start uh blending everything out and just because there's so much bulk back there i started going with my one and a half guard and guess what i went about an inch or so up but this is closed and another thing you guys got to realize while barbering is not everyone has the most perfect head shape a lot of people are going to have little bumps and creases and stuff like that in their head, on their head, on the side, whatever the case may be. And this might make it so that way, when you do finish your fade, like how you would do any other fade and it will look great. But with this client or clients, it doesn't look the same. It looks kind of like there's lines, but you got to understand not everyone's head is perfect. 
no matter how good your technique is, there's just sometimes some days you won't be able to get that perfect fade because of the client's head. And that's neither your fault or the client's fault. Just address this with them and let them know like, yo, you got some creases in your head, man. I'm sorry if it doesn't look faded, but it is faded. Don't say it like that, obviously, but be a little nicer. <laughs> Do not say it like that, but be a little nicer. Be like, yo, bro, I, I, I faded this. It might look like it's not faded, but it it is. You just got some bumps in here. And more than likely, they already know and they're already aware of their own bumps, of their own little creases that make it look as if their hair is not faded. And with this client myself, I've been cutting him since I've started barbering since I was beginning since I could not really fade properly and in the beginning when I would give him a skin fade it would look the same way it would look as if his hair was not faded just because of all the little bumps and creases he has after learning and learning and working with his hair we figured that the best thing to do is not give him a skin fade but to give him a skin taper because with the skin taper, there's more hair on the head. That way you can easily hide and blend in the little creases into the, the fade as much as you can. So like I gave him kind of like a, 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 sh a low taper in the back, I feel like. And on the side, on the other side, he also has a little birthmark. I'll show you, I'll point it out a little bit later, but he also has a little birthmark and that's why I left it so dark on the top as well. So things like this, you just gotta, Figure it out with experience with with your clients. That's all it is, y'all. And as you noticed in the back, as I was rambling on about heads and creases, that it's the same exact steps as the side taper. It's the same exact steps. You go with your no guard open. You fade it down. Then with your one and a half guard closed. And then you hit it with your one guard and then your your 16th guard and then you you from well, me it's the same exact steps and i'm also leaving the little the side notes on the bottom left so y'all can follow along as well because i know when i first started watching youtube videos and all that stuff and people didn't do that i'd be super lost as you can see right here too or as well I'm working from the top up with my number three guard from open going downwards to my close. Connecting the two sides, the sides and the back, making it look as flawless as I can as well. The best that I can as well. And just so I can make it a little softer as well, I'm using my one and a half guard, same exact technique from open to close don't make it too complicated i'd rather start from open and not take anything than start from close and take off too much i say this all the time you can take off hair you can't put it back on unless you want a man weave you really want a man weave no, i don't think you want a man weave <laughs> but for all of those who rock man weaves i applaud y'all I think when I start going bald, though, oh, I'm going to just shave it off, y'all. I can't do it. I can't do it at all. Oh, imagine that thick ass glue on your head all day, clogging up your pores, and then you get, nah, bro. Okay. But, nah, I applaud y'all for doing it, though. Much respect to y'all soldiers out there. <laughs> and right here, I'm just going with my number two guard. Same technique as well. Just going from open to close going really subtle and like i said don't worry about not taking anything off right away not taking a line out right away save it for the end save it when you start doing your detail work and then just continue on with the cut you don't want to waste any time uh right over here just to take off any extra bulk i am doing a little bit of clipper over comb uh partly to take off bulk partly to blend in the sides a little bit more and partly to shape up the sides a little bit more. Once I see that it can't really do much with my clipper over comb, once I've used it for what I needed to use it for, I start going in with my thinning shears, just blending it up a little bit more and softening up that line a little bit more. But the reason why I left so much bulk on this side of the head is because mind you, we still have so much hair on the top of the head that it has to lay down on something. It has to be supported by something. 
that's why I love so much Pope on the top over there. Uh, but next thing we're going is with our number four guard. Mind you, we're doing all of this just to lighten up that bot top line. You still want to keep a lot of hair over there so it can support the top here, but we're just lining up that top line. Uh, I slowly start going down in guards using the same exact technique. Uh, I'm also using my corners as well. And uh, eventually I end up going down to a number two guard, which ended up working for me over there in that top. But I'm still leaving that. You see that crown over there? Uh, where there's a little bit of bulk, I'm still leaving that like that just because in the top here it needs some support for when it's being laid down. So right over here, I noticed that it didn't really look super faded when I saw it in the mirror. So what I do is I grab my 0.5 guard, my 16th guard, and that's when I start very carefully scooping at that line from open, gradually closing it to close. Uh, once I start getting to that bottom line and as you can see it actually did help me a lot I'm still using my corners and it's slowly taking that line out. That's what I want I want a really gradual fade and This is actually what I meant like the the hairs on the sides are actually supporting the hairs on the top This is the foundation for this type of look you need some type of bulk on the sides in order For your hair to look good if your hair is that long on the top. I feel like enough hair on the sides would be good enough to make the haircut look good in order to give it some shape as well. We're clipper over combing just to take as much bulk as we can. Next thing we're doing is going with our number three guard and still just scooping upwards. Trying to take out as much bulk as we can. And right over here, I'm just using my number three guard over by that ear i see a little bit of a line just a little bit so we're going at it with our number three guard and i see that it really didn't do much so eventually you're just gonna see i end up going with my number two guard as well using my corners playing with my lever just to try to make the transition as smooth as it can be And this is all I feel like detail work in order to make the cut look a little bit better. When you just saw me tapering up and using my corners on the side taper, I consider that detail work, trying to make it look better than what it is, trying to perfect it as much as you can. This right here, thinning up the, thinning up the sides in order to make the bulk a little less and blend it as much as I can. This is all detail work as well. These are my thinning shears. I love these shears. If you haven't invested into one of these, I really highly recommend you invest in one of these. It's gonna save you so much time. It's gonna save you so much trouble as well. These are amazing. Just keep, just keep watching the process right here. It's just a bunch of thinning work. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of the cut is the shape up. I love doing the shape up. Still, like how you did the shape up in the back, you're imagining your trimmers as a pencil and I'm using both my hands to keep my trimmers as steady as possible because I have really shaky hands and in order for me to come out with this crispy ass shape up, I use two hands in order to ensure that I do not mess up or push back his hairline. Now, another favorite of mine is the actual hairline, right? Usually I like to start from the middle and I like to work my way outwards. This ensures that I keep 
both sides even because I started from the middle and I could work my way outwards. I love this technique. It's worked for me so far. Obviously, it's not for everyone. I know a lot of people like starting out from the sides and then going towards the middle. But whatever works for y'all, keep on doing it because it obviously works. This works for me. If y'all have anything better, let me know. I'm down for suggestions. I'm down for ideas. I'm down for new techniques. I want to learn with y'all as well. So over here, I noticed that I don't really like the way it actually came out. Um, I felt like it was a little bit slanted. So what I ended up doing is going at it a little bit more, just making that corner a little bit, not higher, but I have to push his hairline back anyway, because he doesn't have a natural hairline, but I just pushed it back a tiny little bit just to make it really straight. Uh, you're going to see right here. I just noticed I didn't really like the way it looked. So I'm just tapping it again, just barely tapping it barely tapping it because I do not want to push them all the way back. Mind you, if you are making a hairline for someone, you are the deal breaker. You you are what's going to determine if this kid is going to have a great ass weekend or if he's going to get bullied for two weeks. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, after we do that, you do it on the same exact side, same steps you did on that. So you can do it on the same side and then you move on to your razor work. Once you do your razor work, this is where you have to be very, very, very careful. Be extremely slow. Have your blade at about a 45 degree angle and pull away from where you're cutting. And the reason why I'm showing a lot of these clips here is because you're seeing I'm going at all different types of angles. You have to go at all different types of angles to get the cut and shape that you want for things in order to make it more comfortable for them too. The back as well, you see me pulling from where I'm cutting. I'm positioning him how I want him to be. And this is where everything just comes together. You see this crispy fade, you see the lineup, you see the hair on the top, y'all. This is perfect right here, in my opinion, just because it took me so long to try and get to this level where I'm at, especially with a client like this who has not the most average head shape with bumps here and there, you know? It's just about pushing through, it's about being patient. And boy, my man is looking nice, my man is looking nice. This is him before, y'all. Uh, like I told you on the beginning, if I saw him, like, yo, you bet my ass I'm running away. I'm, yo, number one. But, but, but y'all not ready. Y'all really not ready, yo. My son, my son looking crispy. Look at him right now. Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. <laughs> Damn, skin tape, comb over with the beard of work. I, I really just changed the life right here. Y'all y'all gotta stop calling me Hobby Clips. It's Dr. Hobby Clips to you now, girl. <laughs> Oof, I love it. I love doing this. This is amazing. I love cutting hair. I love helping people have a smile on their face. This probably has to be one of my best parts too. My favorite parts when I just show them the end result. And they love it, bro. I love how not everyone has the same reaction. Oh, I just love the feeling of having someone like my work. Hobby Clips, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Keep subscribing. Keep commenting. Keep sharing my, my videos. Keep liking my videos. I appreciate y'all, fam. Let me know till next time. You heard? Stay up, my kings, my Gs, my gents. All of y'all. Stay up, you heard? Have a blessed day. Too long.